Wholesale Hotline, where we cover everything to do with wholesale real estate. I'm Jamil Damji. I'm Brent Daniels. And I am Pace Morby. And together we cover the most important parts of wholesale real estate. Lead generation. Conversion of sellers into contracts. And dispositions. Guys, remember when you're watching this show, do us a favor and squad up in the comments. Make sure that you are liking and subscribing to the YouTube channels and in the Facebook group, Wholesale Hotline. Most important, we wanna know we're doing a great job for you and helping you build your business. So go give us a review on iTunes and or Spotify. So squad up and enjoy the show. Welcome to Wholesale Hotline number 202. I'm Brent Daniels, Mr. TTP, joined with... Jamil Damji. I'm happy to be here, I'm bro. happy for you to be here. 2024. Yep. It's our year. It is it's our everybody's year. everybody's year. Yeah. You got the shit kicked out of you in 23? I did. Really? A little bit. I made more money than I'd ever had in my life. Yeah. But, you know... Um, life, life is events. obstacles, sure. man. You got... You know, it's interesting to understand that things can get uh, really bumpy. And no matter, look, uh, you got to split your life into quadrants, Okay. right? Yep. You've got your business. Yep. You've got your uh, family. Mm -hmm. You've got your physical. Mm -hmm. And you've got your spiritual. Yep. If, if, there, if those four quadrants aren't balanced, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how much you have in one. Yeah. The other three will, if you're not balanced in all four, It'll, you'll suffer in one of them, right? And I learned that lesson in 23. So for 24, um, my word is balance, man. Yeah. It's really just understanding like where I got, I got to spend the exact, like just as much time, energy, effort in all of them so that I am growing in every way possible. Because, you know, money is fun, but it, it's, it's not as fun um, as being able to share it. Yep. It's also not as fun as, um, feeling really connected yep. with your spirit. Yep. And if you're fat, it's hard to even get out of bed. Sure. So, so sure. <laughs> you know, all the things, man. So how do you do that and get to a hundred million? Cause a hundred, listen, like one of the first conversations you and I yeah. have ever had yeah. was I am going to make a hundred million dollars, a hundred million dollars. I, I wrote it on the, the, the two by fours of the house that you yep. built a yep. hundred million. You put it on the show, you put it all over the place, yep. right? You've got it locked into your head. Yep. So until you get that, is it hustle season? And if it is hustle season, how do you, how, how is there balance? It, it, no, here's the thing. Yeah. Okay. You can get to a hundred million dollars by like. Okay, I'm gonna get a little woo woo here, but yeah. but it, but you can do it the Newtonian way, right? Let's like let's let's talk science, yeah, right? Where it's just like okay, force mm -hmm. and um, force is mass times acceleration, mm -hmm. right? So if I want to create something, I, I can force it, and I can force it and push and push and push and push and push, and yeah, you'll get there, right? But that is going to create there's friction, mm -hmm. there's all the bumps, there's rattlesnakes, there's this, there's that, there's there's an enormous amount of ways to fall stumble uh and break in that perspective mm -hmm. and i've met people actually i was on a phone call this uh, yesterday morning with a man who's exited three companies at 50 million each yeah dude's hanging out in india right now just having a ball he's like in his late 30s mm -hmm. um actually interesting i'm a i'm a fan of a of a yogi named Sadhguru, who's a, this really interesting cool dude right yeah um, I got selected to be a part of this little in influencer incubator thing where he spent 10 days with this dude in a monastery. So I'm like going. When is this? Um, in March. All right. So um, he, he, we got on a Zoom so he could invite me to that, which was like, you know, I was in tears because I, I you know, I, I, I would absolutely adore that opportunity. Right. Yeah. So um, what I realized is this man hasn't he didn't do it the Newtonian way. He did it. He did it internally. Mm -hmm. Inner engineering, right? You you have to feel like a hundred millionaire. Yeah. You have to feel like a hundred millionaire. You have to think like a hundred millionaire, and then you open your two dumb eyes, mm -hmm. and you will find the opportunities that get you to a hundred million dollars. And that's how it's going to happen. Yeah. 
listen. Is is he an inventor? Because I feel like that that there's differences between he's a dot pe- connector. People that connect, connect dots, yeah. And, but and people that are merchants, and I feel like we're merchants. We can be. Yeah. Of, we can be merchants. We can be inventors. We can be business. Bro, there is in in nobody ever said you could exit a wholesale company before right you're in the middle of you're in the middle of a company you're a part of a company that could take an exit i'm part of a company that could take an exit this is something that was completely completely disavowed by those sure you know prior to us right yeah and now i've understood that there's way too much bs Mm -hmm. and there's you Mm -hmm. you follow what you want you follow what you feel you ignore the BS and keep trucking. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you you were going. You're still yeah, going. I'm still going. It's still like yeah. all the time. Yeah. I remember I texted you um, Happy Father's Day. I don't know, a year or two ago. Yeah. And I said, I'm just ch- I'm just chilling at the pool and, uh, and barbecuing. And you're like, well, I'm serving. I'm doing my mastermind. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know what it's, I mean? I, and you know what? Uh, as much as I love doing that mastermind... I should have been with my kid. Got it. True. But, but so how do you turn that on and off? How do you, how do you know where, where, where the line is? How do you know, you know, cause I, you I, learn I the line, right. learn, bro, you learn the line. You, trial and error, man. Yeah. Trial and error. So like I've made a commitment to my daughter to spend a week in Canada every month. Awesome. I rented a place out there. I am, I, I have like marked it out. We went into her school calendar. We found out all the days she's got like, you know, the Friday off or the Monday off. And, I'm I'm gonna be there, and I'm gonna be there the whole week because she's been coming to she's been coming to America on her breaks. Right. She comes in like spring break, uh, after New Year, uh, summer vacation. So what does she get? Fun, 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 fun. Poor mom has to do have all the heavy lifting, right? Sure. She's got to do the disciplining, the like, you know, all the all the hard work. Which I God bless that woman because she's incredible. Yeah. But when charisma comes to me, it's a party. Yeah. Right. Well, no, it ain't. It, that's not what life is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I got to be there, even if it's just for a week, a month where I wake up, make sure she gets her butt to school, drive her to school, pick her up from school, mm-hmm. help her do her homework mm-hmm. and just do boring stuff. Yeah. Like boring. Not. But it's not boring. It's like stuff that it will enrich my life to be able to sit there and do algebra with her. Right. You know? And, yeah. And and she'll never forget that. She'll never forget the fact that dad is as busy as he is. Mm-hmm. And as much as he's got going on, he decided that I'm more important than any of that. Yeah. And that's, love that, that's the balance, bro. That's what it, that's what it's about. Do you know through the co- different companies that you have, how many people you employ? Uh, it's <laughs> like just just ballpark. I mean, it's it, it's in the hundreds. It's probably for my if, if we're not including pace because there's a there's no no, a, there's no just a, just Keegley you know, and some of Keegley and some, some of, of the, the new reach, reach yeah and, and, yeah uh, uh, three hundred right yeah ish does, does that weigh on you all the time? Don't you have to be on all the time? Don't uh, you have to be pushing all the time? Because businesses either grow or they die. You 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 have definitely have to work right. But you don't have to be on all the time. Got it. You don't have to be on all the time. You don't, man. Like it's it. There is there is absolutely uh, an, an opportunity to breathe, mm-hmm. you know. And you can create so much more from a place of like, dude. I've seen some people who just like fall into their body, and and they're not in their head. They're not in thought. They fall into their body, and then they can do something in a short amount of time mm-hmm. that is way more meaningful, way more impactful than you anything you could do in two weeks. Right. Right? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Efficient, intentional, and then get it done, move on. Well, and that's that's something that I've really found. And it was interesting. You were saying it right before we we went live. You got to talk to more people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then as you start when you're starting out in this business, you you start to as you talk to as many people as you can, as many property owners as you can, as many as, as, as investors as you can, real estate agents as you can, other other uh, business professionals in in our industry as much as you can. And then it kind of just you start talking to other people all day long. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know anybody that is that that hasn't exited a business, but that is in the thick of things that isn't on the phone all day long. Yeah. Right. I mean, you I mean, who are you? T- well, I, as I said, I'm I, I'm on a Zoom with the dude. Right. Mm-hmm. 
this I'm telling you, man, like at three companies, 50 million each. Right. Yeah. And, and, and to me, that's an example because I'm a dot connector too. Right. Mm-hmm. Look, look, I got, I got multiple streams of income. Um, you know, I got this wholesale operation that's crushing. We've got Astro crushing. Mm-hmm. I got my little payment thing going on right now, which is like, I can't even believe it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's life is good, dude. Yeah. You know, and, 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 you know, the chances and the, and the, the reality of a hundred million dollar exit on my horizon are a hundred percent. Yeah, I agree. A hundred percent. Yeah. So, so what, what does it mean if it takes me two extra years mm-hmm. and I get to, and I get to see my daughter more? That's what I'm saying. What does it matter? Yeah. Right. Why, right. why, 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 why do I got to go fast? Yeah. Well, I think that if you if you put if you put constraints on how much you work, you you work when you're supposed to work. Right. And then you go, OK, if I can work as much as I can, if I can, if I can do all this work in 20 hours, what's 21 hours? What's 22 hours? What's 25 hours? And then you start going, OK, can I do what I did in 25 or 30 hours in 10 hours? Right. You, you, and you can. Right. You really can. Well, that's really what leadership is. That's really what what bringing in talented people into your team to replace certain things that you do. Right? I never thought that Monique Walker would ever because she's the stickiest relationship I have. Work with me. anybody else. I, well, no, that she would ever like allow me to bring in somebody from right. my o- operation to jump in. Yeah, dude. So uh, Zach on my team, he's mm-hmm. phenomenal, right? He's the but, best. He's the best. He and is. so I got Zach there. And so I, you know, I, I had to introduce him into the situation because I'm like, Monique, look, uh, you are you are going and I want to honor the fact that you're on the phone that at the time that you're on the phone and you need answers fast. Mm-hmm. And the way my life is going right now, I'm getting answers to you in three hours. Yeah, that's not acceptable. Right. Right. And I and it's, and it's not because I don't honor your the opportunity. It's because I'm literally my phone isn't with me because I can't have it with me because I'm, you know, on a podcast or I'm doing this or I'm doing that. I just can't get to it. Mm -hmm. Let me bring in my cohort here who is as talented as I am, who I've trained that can understand this as it. He'll understand it even better than I do right now because he's in the trenches in in my company and he he, lickety split. Right. So uh, that relationship not that I'm not overseeing it, not that Monique and I aren't the best of friends and we still now have higher level conversations, but you need a buy price. Mm-hmm. Listen, I spent years in that stinky Go office. Zach. Go to Zach. Yeah. Right. I spent years in that little office in the back room comping houses. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. With dude. basketball shorts yeah, and all slides the on. Flip flops, <laughs> you know, in my little polo T-shirts. Yeah. My belly hanging out, all the things, right? But I did it. I, I put my time in. I put my work in. I'm still putting in work. Yeah. But you do it in you. It's you know they this. I hate the cliche of it. There's levels to it, but there are. Yeah. There are. Yeah. And and when you are finally in it, and you finally start to see how those levels materialize, well, um, they happen in the mind first. Mm-hmm. You know, you kind of make a platform in your head, and then you're like, okay, and then you you're on it. Yeah. But the human condition doesn't allow us to get satisfied there. Right. Right. So you're like, well, what's the next platform? Mm -hmm. And then you make it and then you're there and you go and you go and you go and then you die. Yeah. Right. So, and we don't get to take any of it with us. No, but we leave a legacy. And so, um, it's an interesting, it's an interesting thing we're doing here, dude. It's an, we're just, we, we accumulate, we collect, Mm -hmm. we do all these things. And if you don't have the balance of the four, yeah, Think about it, right? You say you just made all the money mm-hmm. and you didn't care about the family. You didn't care about the spo- the soul. You didn't care about the body, the health, right? Mm-hmm. But you got all the money. Okay? Yeah. Well, there's going to be a point because you, you neglected the other three boxes mm-hmm. that you'll die now alone, spiritually bankrupt, and probably intubated on some like breathing machine. Sure. OK, yeah. Then you get those folks who are like, you know what? I don't even give a crap about life. I want to go to the Himalayan mountains. I just want to like meditate all day long and, you know, not shower and just like, you know, do a thing. You just be like, you know, I want to try to levitate or whatever. Right. All right. Cool. I, 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 I got nothing against it. All right. But at the same time, that dude will probably just die in that mountain. Right. Right. Yeah. And no one's going to find him. No one's going to care. And away he goes. Right. You, you, you put you put deposits. In all of them, you put deposits in all of them so that when you're at the end, when you're at the end, 
when you have when you have when you have put deposits in all four quadrants, that's the legacy. Yeah, that's the legacy. And I think that at some point, that's what we're doing here. Well, it also I mean, listen, le- the legacy part is not the money. No, it's not the things. It's not the it, it, and, and probably not even the experiences. Right. Right. Yeah. Because you forget them. It's the echoes of of what people have gotten out of our life. Right. 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 Did we help somebody to succeed? And now they're on a totally different path that they never would have been on before. Right. Or you're not balanced in your four quadrants. Your kids are going to see that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Your kids are going to see where you're unbalanced and they're either going to go one way or the other. Yeah. That's why you see a lot of like entrepreneurial uh, uh, uh kids of entrepreneurial parents they don't want to be business owners no they no, don't no they want to some of the interestingly enough you bring this up because i was having a conversation with an entrepreneur yeah. that has a child right that they're trying to get like to really care about business yeah you know what dude wants to do hmm. raise goats that's it i get it that's what he wants to do yeah i want to raise goats yeah it's like yeah peace Goats. Yeah. For me. Yeah. I, and I understand. I mean, you know, and, and if, and if you can live a good enough life that you can provide your child the opportunity to like grow up and raise goats. Yeah. Phenomenal. Well, that's why I always, that's why when you're looking as an entrepreneur, when are you good, when in your schedule, are you going to be able to hunt for the opportunities? Because I think that there's something just innate Jamil. I think that there's something in each and every one of our brains. that's just like, you know what? I don't want, to be controlled by somebody else. We probably yeah. went to school, but we didn't, we weren't like excited to go to school. Who was excited? You know to what go I mean? School. People are, people love it. People. I mean, some people do. Right. I mean, and, and, and um, nerd. Sure. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I know. I'm you, know, you know what I mean? Like we, we just don't want somebody to control the rest of our lives. Yeah. We don't want to be feared that we're going to be fired. We don't want to worry about like this low, slow way to 401k wealth that hopefully I get enough and my kids will take care of me at the end. of it. Right. We're just built differently as entrepreneurs. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if, if we're built different, if we, if we, if we start with that, that premise, that hypothesis, then how are you going to go out there and serve the marketplace? Right. Right. So yeah. what are you going to do? All right. So you you choose. It's going to be real estate. Right. It's going to be finding great opportunities. Yeah. It's going to be flipping. It's going to be uh, basically to replace your income. You got to flip or you got to do assignments. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You're not getting you're not getting rich off well, of uh, rentals. It, well, you know, it, it, so I had this great debate today with Jason Hartman. You know, Jason Hartman. Of course. Yeah. Brilliant dude. Right? Brilliant dude. So we uh, were we, we did a it'll be coming out on my YouTube channel here in a bit. So if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, do it anyways. Because get in there, get in it. There's there's a video coming out next week that's gonna blow your socks off. And him and I get into it about it because yeah. you know he's a fan of rentals. Yeah. And and uh, I was you know explaining to him why I'm not right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, how I how you know in my long term rentals have been eh. My short term rentals have been pfft. right. You know my pad splits have been have been have been going and uh, and but he's like that's not a proven model yet. Right. You, you wait till wait till we see what the shakeout is with like the municipalities sure. and the cities and the you know there's going to be outrage there's going to be people like you got a freaking rooming house next to me over here like what's what's going on so uh, we'll see in the next five years mm-hmm. how that shakes out and mm-hmm. I'm I I am giving um so much positive energy to Pad Split I hope it works for them sure uh, and I'm going to promote the heck out of them because I feel that that it is an answer to like it's literally the step before homelessness right if you can you can get into a pad split at like a weekly rental you're paying 200 bucks i got a place to live i got a bed i got a shower i got a fridge to like i got a kitchen to cook my stuff i can go to work in dignity yep you got bro i had a i'm i'm i had an uber driver Mm -hmm. that i had i had to you know he was picking me up from the airport and pops up the trunk and there's a suitcase in the trunk already. Right. And it's open. And it's just clothes in there. Right. I get into the, I get into the, uh, it's a black car, right? Mm-hmm. He's sitting there. It's a little funky. Sorry. I, if you're watching this, bro, I'm not, I'm not trashing you. I, I, I love you. I give you a good tip too. Um, but homie must've been sleeping in it. Yeah, sure. Right. Yeah. And, and, and I realized it, right. I'm like, like this man is busting his 
ass. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's paying attention to what we're doing. He's learning. He's trying. He's working. He cares. He wants it. But at the end of the day, he's got to fold them back seats down. He's got to sure. pull up a blanket and he's just got to park at a Walmart and sleep. Yeah. Right. And then yeah. he gets up and does it again. Right. So that so when you have these opportunities where companies are coming in to solve problems uh, for affordable housing, I, I love that. Right. But Jason, going back to that, he 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 has this slide which kind of like really opened my eyes to a lot of stuff. And and the first thing was was the was the a the delta mm -hmm. between the actual in, between actual inflation and reported inflation. Yep. Right. Reported inflation. Typically, reported inflation is it's usually half of actual. Correct. Right. Yeah. So then I think we all feel that. Yeah. So so now take this into consideration. Right. Uh, and I, I, this is where I'm going to give so much credit to our brother Pace because you know he's collecting a lot of debt. And collecting good debt, right? Two, three, four percent mortgages, right? Which is great. That's an asset, yeah. right? But when they print money the way they print money, think about it. It means that the dollar now has less value. So I you get it. So I so know where you're going. You, what you're so it's like the the pay down on that. You get to pay it down with cheaper money. You're not getting rich though. You well now you get you're the wealthy. You get the depreciation. You get the depreciation. Yeah. Right. You get appreciation. Okay. May, maybe cash flow. If you can, if you can figure it out, if you pad split it, you get some cash flow. But pad splits like multifamily. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm talking about like single family rentals yeah, yeah, is I, a joke. It, it, it I've, listen, I, I agree with you in that aspect, yeah. and that's I think that's where him and I bifurcated. Yeah, because I, I look at the single family thing, and I have some right, mm -hmm. and too. I, and I wish I didn't. Right. <laughs> for real. Yeah. Um, great, great for long term. Work, yeah. But what I'm saying is. You're an entrepreneur. Yeah. You you want to either replace your income or make enough income to start building momentum. You need to either flip or assign. Yeah. You're yeah. not getting you're not getting it from the cash flow from a single family rental. That's long term, long -term. wealth. But now now again, right? I um it depends on how you do it, right? Uh um I think pays about a hundred million dollars at the real estate last year. Sure. Right. There's and you know and and he was he was he was very real with with uh, uh, in his conversation with me, um, you know of course it, there's always like uh, it takes time to get them up and going. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be that mo there's that little break of like okay you acquire it now I got to get it, um, you know fixed up three grand up. on average or, yeah whatever every that time is, you turn right? it over whatever that is, um, and then and then and then the way he goes right yeah, so there's a there's there's that balancing act of of. Of, of that situation but now if let's just say 80 percent mm -hmm. okay of his stuff mm -hmm. breaks even mm -hmm. or slightly cash flows yeah right at a hundred million dollars yeah that's a check right right that's a that's a that's that's a check equivalent to what a mike keegley take home is right you know what i mean so yeah. i don't know I mean, I'm I, I look, I'm 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 not going to I'm not going to sit here and be like, hey, guys, be landlords because I'm a wholesaler. I'll always be the wholesaler. Right. You're a wholesaler. That's what we do because that's what we do because it's an elevated position. Yeah. It's, in my mind. Yeah. I mean, it is. Yeah. I mean, finding the opportunities, you get to look down at every kind of exit strategy that you want. But if you don't have deals, you don't have deals. That's it. And what I'm going back to is. We have these brains that say we don't want to be in, uh, somebody to control the rest of our lives. So then we start a business. We, we, we're drawn to real estate. We understand the power yep. of long-term wealth building with real estate. I'm right. not saying anything. If you want to buy real estate, great. Never sell it. You'll yeah. make an absolute fortune. Yep. You'll change the financial uh, future for your families forever yep. if you don't sell it. Right? But that's that that's not what's gonna pay the bills and get you going to full time. So you you go into this business, you're 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 you you have responsibilities. Oftentimes people are coming from different different industries or different life. I mean, you got a lot of people coming from the military, you got a lot of people coming from uh, teaching, you got a lot of people coming from truck driving, you got a lot of people that are in college, you got a lot of people, you right? You know, you you you've got some you you you've you've got some responsibility. Some people have kids and families and everything, right? And so you got to be absolutely laser focused on what is the most income generating activity I can do today. There's nothing. Yeah. Be on, get on the phone, get on, get on the phone and start talking to, talking to everybody, 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 everybody. 
That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That is it. How efficient can you be on the phone? One, you got to pull really great lists. Yep. AI is helping us with all that. Yeah. All I, right. I, we could we could just see some ugly houses. So driving around, we find ugly houses. We can call on all those. We can easily pull up on Zillow or Redfin or on the MLS properties that have TLC or as is or whatever yep. else. We could yep. start making offers. Um but it's just how efficient can you be in the time that you're supposed to work? That's why I say the dumbest people make the most money because yeah. they're not pulling comps before they talk to the homeowner. Right. They're not trying to get their list absolutely laser perfect, right? Yep. They're just seeing rough houses and trying to get in front of that property owner. Yep. That's absolutely it. Or the people that represent those, yep. those, yep. those properties. That's, That's the whole business. So don't, don't like go into this thing thinking that you have to recreate everything. Start with just having a quality conversation, have as many as possible, start building up your experience, and then you can start hiring people. There's a, I, I did a, a to the moon episode today with a, a gentleman named Jason Lee. Yeah. That's in the Astro community, right? He's uh, uh, to, to describe an, uh, him as an introvert uh, would, would be an understatement. Sure. Okay. Um, and this is not at all disparaging. He's a beautiful man, beautiful family, like incredible dude, right? Um, his story was was fascinating because he had a trauma against entrepreneurship because of a, a, like a, a thing his father did when he was young. Sure. So he was just like, entrepreneurship is garbage, mm -hmm. right? Because he saw like the whole Zebra. world explode. Yeah, sure. Right? Um, he's in this little box. He's a FedEx driver. And uh, so he's working nine to five. He can't. He can't really, um, he can't do the follow-ups. He can't do the things, right? Mm -hmm. So he gets Astro Blaster, right? I'm not, this is not a commercial for it, but the, the only way he could actually maintain follow-ups, because here's the thing. A lot of us, when we're doing this business, we first start and it's motivation that gets us on the phone and that motivation lasts three, five days. Let's be real, yeah. right? Yeah. And then what happens? You get back into your life yeah. and you stop doing the work. Yeah. Right. You stop following up. Da, 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 blah, blah, blah. So anyways, the, the robot started doing that, kept doing the touches. He said it took 10 touches on an agent. He wasn't even like involved in it because it was the robot doing the talking. Agent sends him a, 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 a deal, an, an off market pocket listing in one of the most difficult markets. I hear all, people say all the time, oh, LA is impossible. Mm -hmm. Th so this is LA. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. He gets sent a house in LA. Agent says, we want $9.99. He's like, you get $8.50. They're like, okay. So they take it. Mm -hmm. Then he goes on this like roller coaster ride selling to try to sell the deal. The deal goes under contract like three times, falls out. It's just this massive, like, like emotional um, roller coaster for him. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, sells it for eight eighty, makes thirty thousand bucks. Nice. And 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 honestly, right? The if you if you were to say to him, if you were to when you, when you watch this, you'll be like, okay, it it'll show you that you don't have to be a specific type of person. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a big personality like Brent Daniels. You don't have to be a creative genius like Pace Morby. You don't have to have done 7,000 wholesale deals like Jamil Damage. You don't yeah. have to be anything like that. Yeah. You can be a regular person mm -hmm. and have the most phenomenal life, making the most phenomenal money if you just figure this incredible business of wholesale real estate. It, it is truly the most game-changing, life-changing amazing thing I have ever experienced in my life. Yeah. Bro, I'd be like, I don't even know. I I very likely be an Uber driver. I'm brown. I, that makes sense. That's what would have happened. If I didn't you find wholesale, I'd have a taxi or an Uber driver. I don't know. It, it, medical school didn't let me in. So what other options did I have? Right? Yeah. I probably would have been a really good Uber driver too. I promise. I wouldn't have been the guy the with best. all the all the good stuff in it. You got the disco yeah. lights. Oh yeah, hell yeah, dude. It would just be Tupac all the time. Oh yeah. Yeah. People would love it. <laughs> You'd be dressed as Tupac. Tank top showing oh off the tat. It'd be so great. Good. So good. Guys, get your questions in the chat. We want to help. We're going to answer a bunch stuff. of questions. We just wanted to warm it up uh, for the first half hour here. Um, Jamil, how is 2024 looking so far for you guys? Okay. Because so, you have some stats. I got some stats. I got stats, man. I want to uh, run through this so that we can. We're up 25%. Uh, up. Mm -hmm. 25% volume uptick from the beginning of 2024 to right now. 
in terms of volume if we're comparing it to uh, December yep. of 2023. Okay, so this is just like how many phone calls, contracts, assignments, phone calls, contracts, assignments. It is booming right now. Yeah. And it makes sense that it's booming. It yep. absolutely makes sense that it's booming. We have now been given the forecast of a an attempted soft landing of the Fed. Mm -hmm. We're in an election year. We mm -hmm. understand what that means. It's right? the year of the dragon, they say as well. Yeah, it is. Which the is year always exciting. Always exciting, right? right? I was born in the horse. I don't know. I mean, but I got a dragon tattoo, so maybe it's something. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but 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 truly though, uh, I do believe that we that here are the here are the two the two statistics I think are important for you to watch in 2024. I think you need to look at months of inventory. Yep. On the market because that because everybody right, right now the lock in effect is what's keeping inventory off the market. So people holding two, three, four percent mortgages, they're saying, uh uh, ain't gonna sell, gonna either rent it or stay put. But I am not gonna, I'm never gonna because they're now realizing that the debt is the asset. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. So they're holding on. So, and they've been holding on. But what happens when we get to five? And you're at four. Now that delta is like a point. Yeah. And now all of a sudden that decision making process of do I sell doesn't become so difficult anymore. Because when it was seven, seven and a half, that was a hard decision. That was actually an easy decision to make. You're like, nope, ain't going to do it. But now when that delta gets smaller and smaller and smaller, there is going to be uh, um, more inventory on the market. But guess what? All these people that say it's going to crash. Nothing happens that fast. No. It happens in stages. It happens. Everything happens in these like little chunks, like little, 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 tiny little waves. Right. And so I believe uh, that we will get better affordability mm -hmm. because rates will come down. But uh, sadly, I and I don't say I, I, I don't mean sadly because I'm a real estate investor. I want I want appreciation, but I care about the general population. I care about people like this young people that are sitting in this audience right now. I want these dudes to own homes. Yeah, I want these guys to have their own homes. I want them to be able to afford to live in their own houses right now. They're learning wholesale real estate. So y'all probably be able to get it done. But there's other people out there begging groceries at the Safeway right now who who would like to live in their own home who want to be able to paint their own walls, who want to not have landlords just up and kick them out one day and say, hey, I'm going to sell. I'm moving to California or wherever. I'm going to sell a property or I'm changing my situation or whatever, and you got to go. Like, that happened to us. Mm -hmm. And and because my sister had a young one, nobody wanted to take us in. Right. Like, nobody wanted to let my... It was like two two elderly people, my sister and a, and a baby. And, and them... And we are well-qualified people with great income, with great credit scores, and nobody wanted to rent to us. Mm -hmm. So when you think about it in the terms of that, like that's, that, that is, that's dangerous, dude. That's dangerous. So I'm, I'm hoping for, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for the, the American, like the, the, the regular dude, the regular female, the regular family that there, that there's an opportunity at some point for, home ownership to become something that's not a luxury that is that that it is actually uh, um a reality for many people you know yeah i just don't know if we're gonna get there i don't do you think because of inventory no i mean i think pricing yeah it, well inventory and pricing but i think it's like you know if rates come down but just, bro it, like but the whole economy runs around the the real estate market you know what I mean? They yeah. got to keep building new houses. That's what they need to do. Right. Actually, the answer is build more houses. That, that's why we see huge appreciation is when they stop building houses, when Which interest rates did. go up. Yeah. Which they did. I mean, the, but between 2010 and th 2020, look at the stats. I mean, it was ridiculous. It was like every every 10 years, it was like 20 million, 20 million new houses, 20 million new houses from the 70s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2010 to 2020, 6 million. Yeah. What do you think? What, and the, and what did the you hear? That, what's bananas. the deficit that you've heard right now? Oh, I have no idea. Uh, Jason and I were chatting. Yeah. Uh, so we have 149 million homes in the United States. Okay. We are 12 and a half million homes short. 
we are 12 and a yeah. half million homes short. Yeah. And and there are more 35 year old deficit of houses of yeah, houses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there are more 35 year old men living in their parents home than should than there should be. For real. Yeah. Because they can't they, 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 they don't have another option. Right. Yeah, but, you know, interest rates are going to do what interest rates do. The the all of the media is going to be, you know, consumed by the election. So it's going to be a fantastic year. It's going to be a fantastic year for for everybody to go out there and find a great opportunity and to start really building your business. And this is your 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 big word of the year is balance. Mine is big. Go, go big. Do it. We're expanding. We're getting into other markets. We're excited about that. I mean, I think that this is the time for sure, especially with all the technology that's out there now and the ability to really understand values quickly mm -hmm. and really be able to approach cash buyers quickly and mm -hmm. understand what's going on. I think there's no reason why anybody couldn't be in any market, to be honest. I mean, there's some markets are going to be better than others, but we're going big. Love yeah, we're going to add Love three. It. We're going to add three markets over the next um, uh, three years. So uh, Phoenix being the main consult market. with me on that. Cause I, yeah. cause I have data. Oh, I know. Well, I talked to Jeremy yeah. Dispo today yeah. and he's good, like, good, good, well, good. let's just hook in with Keegley wherever yeah. they're at yeah. and we'll yeah. just sell the deals yeah. there. We don't even have to worry about all the, all, no all of that. Right. Yeah, of course. And bro. so course. Um, that makes it super easy, but also it's like the marketing. So we're looking at it a couple different ways. Cause it's interesting. Cause you see there's two main models really, if you boil it all down to like big boy, big girl uh, business, there's higher 30 to 40 callers get as many leads in as possible, train up absolute savages to take all those, those leads in, convert them, do it all over the phone, send it virtually, get them locked up, get them sold. Right. Yep. Yep. Solid model. Yep. Solid model. Yep. Ton of turnover. Yep. Ton of turnover, ton of training. Yep. Right. But the budgets aren't bad. I was, I, I broke the budget down there because I talked to Jason Hubley who owns call motivated sellers yep. and you can get somebody, it just depends on the budget, eight and a half dollars to $30 an hour. Right. Just depends on what kind of quality, what kind of experience. Uh, but if you, let's just say you sit right there in the middle and, and you, you want somebody really good, 10 agents for $15 an hour is six grand a week. Okay. 24 grand a week. I mean, 24 grand a month for, for our businesses is not nothing. It's not nothing. huge. No, it's not because you got, what is that? Two deals. Oh, maybe one deal. Well, for you, two, yeah, two, two, two of deal, mine, one of yours, two, two deals yeah. in, in, um, if you were to average it out, the average deal size is about 15,000, yeah. right? Yep. So two deals. So imagine having 400 hours of calls by these cold callers. Cause they go 40 hours a week. They talk to a tremendous amount of people. They then get it in and, and you have great data mm -hmm. and you know how to filter the data. Right. And you put them in the best position to win and they're managed. Right. They send them in. Now you need a team to be able to, to convert them. Yeah. Or convert you, them. You yeah. need to convert yeah. them. Yeah. yeah That's course. where everybody really makes it. Cause yeah. getting, getting the low hanging fruit and talking to enough people and getting, it's really tough to screw up a motivated seller. Yeah, it really is Yeah, because they're going to sell. They have a problem. They're going to sell. It just depends. The magic is, are they going to sell to you? Right. That's where the magic is. That's where the skills are. So your acquisition team has to be absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. You have to hire really great people. You got to train them. And it's a bigger machine. You, you know what I'm saying? 100%. The other side of this is pay-per-click everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm still not. I'm everything. still not sold on it though. Paper click everything. I, I mean, I don't. I don't know though. I, I'm, we've got it. We got a. We we went one to four. Yep. This year, um, and I'll tell you the numbers. The average, uh, the average cost for pay per click last year was seventy two hundred here in Phoenix. Per deal. Per deal. Okay. Okay. Average deal size was uh, twenty four thousand, twenty five thousand. All right. So seventy two into into uh, twenty five thousand. And uh, start to finish first contact to close 50 days, right? Calls start to finish 108 days, right? right. So you're not, you're not getting your money back out of that investment for, for uh, building a big team for typically about 90 days. It's yeah, pr yeah. probably pretty average, but ours was 108 days, yeah, right? Yep. So pay-per-click's faster. Yep. Pay-per-click, you need way less people because yep. you have way less leads, way less leads, right? right? So your overhead's lower. If you have people on base plus salary, you, you, you have, I mean, you know, I know who you got doing the pay-per-click for yeah. you, right? Uh, phenomenal dude. Very rare. Yeah. It's very rare. Yeah. I've, I've hired probably 
10 agencies yeah. in, in the history, in yeah. our history. Yeah. And every one of them have been dog shit. Yeah. Right. Well, you need somebody to watch it hourly. And that's something that we've learned. Yeah. I mean, you need the campaigns watched hourly. And we've, we've given, we, we have like 10 people that we're working with in, in the Rhino tribe that throughout the country that, that we're doing pay-per-click and we'll build an agency around that. That's really good to make sure that it's really focused. Um, but the leads are now, yep. the leads are incoming. Yep. They're they're. I mean, the acquisition team loves it yep. and you don't have to have as many people. So it's like this balancing act. Yeah. Do you hire 30, you know, 10 people to make calls and another five acquisition managers or three acquisition managers? Can you scale that though? Cause that's the other piece, of course. right? How? Because it's so like, cause now you got to have the rock star cause it's, it's Johnny rocket on the spot. You got to be the guy that's, getting the phone yeah you also got to be the guy that can convert and let's be for, for which side the calls the or PPC, the P ppc ppc yeah. right and that there's the other piece so you got you've got it you got it you got a great situation yeah um but at like scale is my is my issue with that right because you can do this across the country and you can probably help you know hundreds of people across the country maybe thousands of people across the country yeah um but how do you at what point can you be like okay we spent 24 grand this month mm -hmm. on pay-per-click mm -hmm. uh spend 200 right oh no there's a cap that's what i'm no, saying no no no. there's certainly a cap and you find that out it, we a, found like at thirty five thousand in our market here in phoenix there's a huge, huge drop, drop. huge so but you need to you need to manage your accounts to be able to see that you got to be watching all the metrics all the time the issue is people set it they start getting success and then they leave it yep. and then that's it when goes, you see it goes go, to hell Brr. yep Nobody's watching it. Yeah. You need somebody watching it like yeah. a hawk. Seriously. And, and and I mean, again, you've. And you've, Google's making a ton of changes. Yeah. All, all the time. time. You got to be on time. top of all of that. So yeah. it's like the, 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 the TTP in me is like, oh, cold call team, yeah. bunch of people, get them in here. Yeah. We're going to, it's going to be great content. Yeah. It's going to be really, you see people, you know, on YouTube now and they're getting a bunch of people following them and, and they love it because they're, it's like that old school pit, right? The, the leads are coming in They're They're, they're doing the negotiations live on the, on their YouTube channels and yeah, all this, it's right? Great. It's great. Right. Yeah. So there's something to that, but the, the flip side of that, a lot of turnover, bro. Yeah, a tremendous amount of recruiting and turnover and training, recruiting, turnover and training because it's a tremendous amount of leads. Yeah. And, 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 and every one of those people have to be willing to call 60 to 70 people hand dial a day, a day, which is difficult day after, after day, day after day after day yep. after day after day. You know what I mean? And when, when you're recruiting for this business, you know, as well as I do, part of it is I want to be in that environment so I can have my own business. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you, you go for a year making 50, 60 calls every single day. All of a sudden you want to do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. You want to go build this yourself. You want the whole pie. You don't just want a piece of the pie. Yep. So it's just, there's, there's more friction i think in that process than a pay-per-click but pay-per-click you got to watch your budgets you got to you got to test it all the time testing all the time um uh, but the the leads have been fantastic we did awesome. but you want to hear awesome. you want to hear something crazy what tv last year yeah average deal size 60 grand wow average spend thirty-seven thousand per deal per deal yeah, so turn it off. Oh, yeah, it's off. <laughs> but think about that. Think about if you did have 10 agents calling that was super talented and uh, and getting in. It's it's just like that Why? whole thing. They were like and I, I want to ask you because you have this big machine. Yeah. You have yeah. a big office with a lot of people yeah. and all these things. I'm just. And you super low turnover. Right. Yeah. But we drug them all. You you drug them all. No. Yeah. I mean, you no, got no. them all bewitched. No, it, it's the culture, brother. Right. Like we have, we have an incredible culture in that, in that organization. Right. It is, it is beautiful. Yeah. Um, and, and the drug is love. Right. It is. Yeah. It's like, we, we love on the people in that, in that company. Recognition, and, and, yep, attention, all, all the that. things. Yep. All the things. All right. Let me put, let, let's get to some questions. Are my, a key, a Kai, can I hire two callers as interns? Compensation would be experience and some coaching plus bonus for closing. Would this work? No. <laughs> Sorry. It's yeah, I would no. love it. Yeah. I did it for years. Yeah, it never works. No, I did yeah. it with real estate agents. They show up on I day one. Yeah. Uh they're late on day two. 
they're not there on day three. Yeah. Yeah, listen, if you want people's attention. What's up? For, it's exactly if, how it goes. If, if you want people's attention in your world, you need to be able to provide something for them. Yes. And it can't just be experience. No, no. People people need some sort of base plus yeah. or just pay them hourly. Yep. I've always found I've kept the same phone prospectors, one now for four and a half years, maybe five years. Fran might be five years. Hourly. You pay them hourly. Hourly. No, she doesn't even want bonus. Yeah. She just wants either more hours or she just wants job security. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. So I always found that the best callers live overseas. Not that they're, that they're, they were born here. They were raised here. Expats. Live, expats. Yeah. Yep. They, they, they are living in central or South America and they have no other options for jobs, right? right, right. It's either customer yeah. service or it's sales yep. and sales is just more exciting for them. So, um, I, I love the idea. I wish it would work. I tried it a bazillion times. I tried it even with my platform and given my coaching and giving everything in the blueprint to build a million dollar business. They laugh last uh six days yeah I mean, well you you doubled what i was i right. like, i'm literally day one they show up they're pumped day two they're late day three they're not there yeah that's that that's the recipe yep i love it um here we go i'm hesitating to contract houses because of not having a buyer list how can i find more buyers um there's tons of ways to find. actually uh, there's a website they could go to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a you can just reach out to a Keegley. You know, we be we're a dispo wholesaler, so you can uh, uh like use us, but I'm not again here to just self-promote. There's there's plenty of ways to find buyers. Tax records by far one of the greatest tools in finding buyers, right? Second, you find uh you use a tool like Privy. And you actually look at who's been closing properties and then you find those organizations, go to opencorporates.com, find out who the managing member of that organization is. You skip trace that person, you call them up and you have a conversation. Next thing you do is you look at the MLS, you see who just listed a flip on the MLS over the last like week and you call the owner of that LLC again and say, hey, compliment the flip. Tell them they did a beautiful job. Let them know you got one in the same area or in the same city that they just listed a, mark, uh, a house on. You'll know it's a flip because there's no clothes in the closet. Uh, yeah, Pace, Pace was going to join us. He had a last minute meeting that he had to uh, take care of. So we will see him next week, everybody. Um, and so take a picture of us and send it to him. You ready? Actually, everybody come in here. Let's get come in here. here. Come yeah, here. Get come get here. Get audio. Yeah, yeah, come on. <clears throat> everybody come in here. Take a picture of this. Send it to Pace. You guys all have them on Instagram. And uh, tell them we miss them and we'll see them next week. Look at this right? live audio. Hey, come on. Hey. hey. Smile here. Awesome. All right, Great. get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but hey, listen, I, I want to I wanna invite uh, as many of you as, as possible to uh, to come to Phoenix and actually experience uh, the energy in this, uh, you know, of of what happens in this city. It, it, it's mm -hmm. known as the mecca of wholesale for a reason. Mecca um, real estate investing. If real estate investing mm -hmm. for a reason. There's there are more talented people. There's more energy focused towards what we do in this town mm -hmm. than anywhere else. You can come visit the TTP offices. You can come visit the Keegley offices. You can hang out um, at Pace's organization and and follow him around for a day. There's so many, so much you can gain from 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 coming out here and and being around this energy that I I I, I highly recommend you guys do it. It's worth your time. It's 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 worth the trip. And uh, you know, don't just, you guys have something coming up in April? My goodness, Brent. Yeah. Squad Up Summit 2024, bro. It's the biggest real estate event that's that's going to happen in all of the year, no in my opinion. No doubt. Three thousand people. Yep. Um, we are half, oh, we're nearly halfway sold out, which is impossible in January. Yeah. For April. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, so if, if you have not yet got a ticket, go to uh squad up summit, I think it's squad up summit, 2024.com. Bobby, can you figure it out and put it in the chat? Thank you, bro. Um, but squad up summit, 2024, I think.com Bobby's going to put it in the chat, get your ticket. Imagine being in a room with 3,000 wholesalers, 3,000 of them, right? Mm 
Mm-hmm. It's it's going to be phenomenal. It's, oh, you'll make relationships with, there that'll yeah, last a lifetime. Last, last a For lifetime. Yep. Um, Brent, we love to have you there. I'd love to have the entire Rhino tribe there. This is not um, – this is – uh, one of those times where I think this is like the family reunion of our business model. Mm-hmm. Like this is where we all come together and we're like best practices. This is where you have those interesting dinners with people. Like you, you find people that you resonate with and you, you go have dinner with them. You bring your families cause where it's going to be in Orlando, Florida. So if you've got your in Orlando, yeah. If you got your, Why spouse, Orlando? cause it was the only place that we could find a venue big enough. Plus we what wanted to, April in Phoenix is like the greatest time. Yeah, ever. but we want. When in to, April is it? Uh, um, April twenty third to twenty fifth. Nice. Bobby, did you find the website? Twenty third to twenty fifth. Yeah. April twenty third to twenty fifth. Uh, Squad up summit twenty twenty four dot com. I think. Um, but we wanted it to be in a family friendly area because we 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 hope that you bring your spouses, that yeah. you bring your kids, go to Disney World. There's going to be so many of us that are going to be spending extra days there and just hanging out with our families and letting look, if you've got, if, if in your family right now, your, your people are like, Hey, I don't know if this is really like a real thing. <laughs> Bring them to that event. Yeah. Let them see what that is about. Do you, we got Mel Robbins coming. Awesome. It's impossible yeah. to book that woman. Yeah. She's incredible. Um, and Donald Miller from thing, story eight brand. Second something. What was her thing? Um, like, uh, I, I've, I've uh, eight seconds. Some Mel 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 Robbins. Mel Robbins. Look it up. It's uh, yeah, it's good. She's phenomenal. Yeah. I, I I adore that woman. Um, but it's it's absolutely going to be a, a phenomenal phenomenal opportunity, you guys. There, squat, just squat up some. There's a question guess, about so I, uh, I messed do, it up. Do Thanks, universities buddy. teach uh, real estate investing? I know ASU has a real estate. Um, minor that you could do. Uh, Mike Mahoney got that. Um, and um, uh, that's pretty cool. I think it's more like commercial real estate type thing and development is from what I can, uh, what, what uh, I remember, but maybe not. Maybe it's more, you know, maybe they'll, they'll talk about single family well, now that it's a thing. Pace and I actually lectured. Five at- second rule. That's it. Thanks, Brandon. That's Thank it. you. Uh, Pace and I lectured at Penn State. Mm-hmm. Uh, on on a, in in a real estate class there. Yeah, you know it was oh, in, cool. it was incredible. It was cool. one of the most the coolest experiences to be able to do that. Um, I got the opportunity to speak at uh, ASU's real estate investing club. Amazing, amazing. Like, this you is you got to go talk to them. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, this is and, great and this group. is I I I I love it because you know higher education needs to evolve. Mm-hmm. It absolutely needs to evolve. It has not yet um, embraced the fact that. Uh, a sociology degree is not going to get you anywhere. Like they're, be, they got to start being real with people in the admissions departments. No joke. No, like what, what are you doing taking anthropology? <laughs> Sorry if there's an anthropologist in the room. What are you doing? Like, you know, I, I actually took anthropology because I had to. It was an elective. And the only thing I remember from it is Australopithecus. What is that? It was us before us. It was the like people before Homo. Nice. Yeah, yeah, like before before Homo sapiens. There yeah. was Australopithecus. We were like you know hairy little blah, 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 little were gremlin. We in Australia? Little, yeah. No, we were just that was what we were called. We were in Africa, bro. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, good. That's uh, we color we we covered the the college. Uh, yeah, there, yeah. I'm gonna get so many DMs tomorrow. <laughs> Bring them on. Uh, we got this question. Go ahead. Uh, can can you identify mm-hmm. what situation or moment turned you into a freedom fighter? Mm. Starting sharing all this knowledge. Oh my god, that's a great question. I, I will I will identify for me what it was. It was this man. Mm. Um, he uh, he because I was I, I was invisible on social media. My profile picture on Instagram was an owl. Uh, I didn't answer DMs. I didn't care to because I was wholesaling too many houses. Yeah. But um, I was doing a lot of business with Brent, and he 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 convinced me. He said, "Jamil, you 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 you're doing something here that is, um, completely different, and it works. Obviously, it's working extremely well. Look at what's going on over here, and you gotta you gotta share it. 
You have to share it. It's your responsibility to share it because there's people out there sharing misinformation um, who don't do the business and, and, and people are getting scammed. And we got to elevate the yeah. situation. And so that, that was the, actually, it was actually the defining moment for me. Uh, it was Brent Daniels. Well, I think Josiah, too, coming out with uh, Astro early yeah. on and yeah. you building that up and doing all yeah. the but, really but, being the backbone of all yeah. of that. Yeah. And, then, yeah. you know, taking the helm. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I think I was I was always um, I was always a team sports type of guy. Right. And um, I always liked the the speeches that the coach would give. You know, I always thought, how did they come up with that? You know, how do they, how do they put this, the thing about all these things and then they got to, you know, they, they got to not motivate us, but like, keep us all like together and, and, and focused on the job at hand and all that. And I, I always, I always had great admiration for all the, the coaches or big professors that I had uh, in college or even, even uh, some great teachers in high school. I just thought that it was great how they could um, just change a perspective, you know, and, 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 um, and, and it led me to more being more curious. And so, um, I think curiosity is an underrated skill or underrated, um, I don't know, attribute, I guess. And so I just wanted to see, you know, if, if what I did worked for other people yeah. and it did, and then you find principles in that and you go, okay, if it works for me and it works for this guy and this gal, then does it work for everybody? Right. And then you just try to put together all the things that work for everybody and just get as loud as possible for yeah. it. Because again, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be a, a picture on somebody's wall a hundred years from now. Yeah. You know what I mean? If, yeah. if you're lucky, right. if you're fortunate, if you're, if your family likes you. Well, not even on somebody's wall, you're going to be, it's everything's it's digitized. Gonna digital, it's going to be in somebody's yeah. Someone's like computer moving classes. like, you know, photo frame or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like, man, so I mean, what lasts, what lasts is the echoes of the, the value that you provided, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and you just hope to do Was as it, much of that uh, as possible. Bruce, it's my favorite quote. Bruce Lee said the key to immortality is living a life worth remembering. Mm, mm -hmm. That's that hit me. I, re I remember I, I watched that, um, that Bruce Lee, um, you know, document. No, it wasn't a documentary. It was like the, 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 the Bruce Lee story or whatever. Right. With that Jason Scott Lee guy yeah. as a, as a, yeah. the actor, he that did a awesome. phenomenal job. Dragon. The dra yeah. So good. Yeah. So good. Bolo Young was the bad guy. Oh yeah. He bounced his titties, you know, so that he good. did the thing. Oh, he was so um, good. Um, but that movie was phenomenal. But, like, you you know, you look at the, um, you look at, like, a, a man like Bruce Lee, right? Mm -hmm. He was here a short time. Yeah. Uh, and, and did so much. Mm -hmm. And people still regard him as the greatest martial artist of all time. Yeah. Um, you look at uh, uh, Tupac. Mm -hmm. 26 years, dude. He passes at 26 years old. Mm -hmm. And you can go and listen to any of his albums and find timelessness in all of them. Yeah. Right. And so like, what are you going to leave behind here? What are you going to do? Yeah. What are you going to do? Love it. What are the pros and cons of a down market? Oh, Nicholas. Oh, asks. oh. Nicholas Sam's. I, oh, a down market is the time to buy my friend. That is when you are the negotiation King is you are cash rules. Um, the buyer gets to decide. A down market is where you buy deep. You buy deep, 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 deep. I have gotten the best deals that I've mm. ever bought in the down market. That's not what, like, it's it, it's the, it's the greatest time. It, people got it twisted. They're like, oh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a down market right now. I don't want to be involved in real estate. And that's why you are a sheep. Because you are not letting yourself think outside of the box you're not understanding how the actual world operates in this in the world of real estate and when there's fewer buyers at the table which makes it a down market that brings that makes all the people who are sellers mm -hmm. very 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 desperate mm -hmm. very desperate mm -hmm. you're the hot chick at the party yeah I'm sorry that was so derogatory, but it's what it is. Like you, you are like you're you're the you're the you're the per, you're the one everybody wants to know. You're the one everybody wants to look at, talk to, be around, because you got you're you can write the check, you mm -hmm. can close the deal, and that means that I am selective. I can be selective, I can be aggressive, yeah. and I can get what I want for way less than I'm going to have to pay when the market is up and crazy. Uh, what's the Do you downs think it's of a it? Down market. 
I don't think let's we, answer that. I I don't think it. I what think. What do you it, think kind of market is this? It was balanced stale. Right. It was stale. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Kind of like when you leave your clothes in the washing machine a little too long. Mm-hmm. That smell like that for a bit. But it's not like that anymore. It's downy now. It smells good. Not downy. No, no, it's downy. 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 You know, like yeah. the, with the fabric softener. Yeah, 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 it's good. It's fluffy. Yeah. 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 No static. It's good. I'm I'm excited about 24, dude. I'm I'm super bullish on it. I think I think there's a, a, a tremendous amount of opportunity. I do not see the housing asset class uh, have any danger. And as I was again looking, you you guys have to watch this YouTube video we put out next Monday with Jason Hartman. I I just don't know a more um, uh, a, a more intelligent person who's Everything he says is data driven. Mm-hmm. So he's like, he's, he's like in the numbers, he's swimming in the numbers. And when he comes to a conclusion on what, where things are going, it's, it's, um, it's with a lot of thought and analysis. And it's not one of these opinions. You know, it's funny. I was uh, listening to the CIA operative who was talking about how you can actually get somebody you're talking to, to actually like have like identify with your opinion or even like implant it into their head and make, make it, theirs you know mm-hmm. um some just some uh, trickery right um it's not even that i like we're we're not messing around here like i'm not saying to you guys like hey guys the market's gonna be really good so that you guys all just go out and do real estate right now this is like if you do not take advantage of what's gonna happen in this year i don't know what's gonna happen in 25 i'm i'm, I'm i i'm not i don't have enough information to determine that i'm gonna be watching two data points over the year Months of inventory, days on market. Those are my two most important data points I'm going to be watching in the year. Um, if months of inventory get close to six, s- start pausing. Mm-hmm. We're at two and a half right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's going to be soaked up early this quarter. Yeah. It already is. Yeah. I mean, you already see uh, properties going yeah. under contract really fast. Guys, what you can do is you can go to Realtor.com, Realtor.com, and you can look at the all of the active listings in your area. All right. It pulls it up. The, the first thing is it's going to pull up actives and uh, pendings. Now, what you can do is you can go in into the more button. I would share this, but I, I don't think the computer's uh, connected. Is it, Matt? It's all right. Don't don't worry about it. And you can go in and you can look at um, you can remove all of the pendings. And so then you look and you go, OK, there was five thousand active and pending. If I remove all the pendings, that takes it down to thirty five hundred. Then, you know, subtract. All right. Thirty five from five. You know, there's fifteen hundred pending listings. Right. Right. Yep. And then you go, what is the active listings divided by the pending Pendings. listings? Yep. And that'll tell you how many months of inventory, inventory, which also affect the percentages that we have to get, right? Listen, in a good market, in a bad market, in a stale market, we still have to talk to people. We still have to find opportunities. That doesn't change. The only thing that changes is our negotiations and what price we can lock that property up. So if you are... Under two, if you're over two months of inventory, typically you're going to run the 70% minus repairs rule. Typically, if we're just broad stroking it, if it's less than two months, now you're at 80%, 80% minus repairs. Well, I I was texting with you today. I mean, we're at like 82, 84%. 82 minus repairs. Minus repairs. Yeah. Here is what deals sell for. Yep. Is what deals are selling for. And 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 we're right there at that like two month inventory. Yeah. Right. And so um that's that that's really the key indicator. And if you're you guys want to know how to do I'm 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 still standing beside behind my dollar per square foot flat flat method right now yes. on a cosmetic right now, guys. Yes. Don't spend a half an hour pricing out Tell baseboards. Them. Tell them what, and paint. what do they use? It's sixty bucks a foot. Yep. It's sixty bucks a foot right now for cosmetic. It's, yep. it, it, it's it's what it is. If and and this is excluding SoCal in New York, excluding SoCal in New York, everywhere else in the country, it's sixty bucks a square foot for a, for a well done cosmetic remodel. That's like you know the the nice stone, the like a well done cosmetic. You're talking remodel. kitchens, bathroom, kitchens, the whole bathroom, thing. the whole all sixty the, bucks, sixty bucks a foot. 
and 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 I'm and if you use that number and it needs less, good for you because you got a better deal, right? But you but but you can be very confident that at sixty bucks a square foot, as long as you're not talking uh, Cali or New York, your number is going to be pretty on the on the money. Matt, can you put this computer on or no? Yeah, that'd be fine. I'll show you guys how to pull this right here because it's pretty easy. And I just want to make sure that you guys understand the I, math because this I, gets tricky I, for a I, lot of people. I, I apologize. It's not 60. It's 50. I'm okay. so sorry. It's yeah. 50. I'm I don't, my head's in the wrong spot. It's 50 bucks a foot. 50 Sound bucks bite. A 50 bucks a foot. Yeah, it is 50 bucks a yeah. foot. Yep. Okay. Well, I mean, you look at it and you're even even carpet and paint. Even just going oh, in and Yeah, what well, used to be a dollar. It used to be a dollar. Yeah. You guys are doing some math right now. Are you guys in a remodel right now by chance? Anybody in a remodel in here by chance? No. Um Yeah. I mean it's 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 where it's shaking out right now. There we go. You want to share that, Matt? Put that up there. All right, guys, just put a main screen, please. And um here we go. All right. So if you look here, guys, I just put in Phoenix. We'll we'll, we'll just start from the top. Just so that every step is taken care of. Put in whatever city you're in. Okay, put it in right here. And you're going to go search. And right here, you're going to see how many properties there are. Right here at the top. See where this is highlighted? Right here. All right? That's weird that my mouse doesn't show up, Matt. we got to figure that out. Anyway, so 4,648 homes. And then you go to listing status and go hide, pendings, and contingent. Okay? And then you go, and it's thirty-four fourteen. Take that, take that, and divide. So you've got uh, thirty-four fourteen. There's forty-six hundred. There's twelve hundred pending in Phoenix. Just divide. It's about three. It's about three month inventory there. And this is probably and that's uh, a, that's a yeah. that is a buyer's market. Yeah, uh, a, a balanced seller buyer market is six months. You get over six months, you are in. Uh, um, sorry. It is a seller's market right now. Right. Uh, when you are at six months, you are at a balanced market. When you are over six months, you're in a buyer's market. Oh, there you go. No, easy peasy. There it is. So, guys, again, go back there, Matt. Let me just let me just remove this one more time. So, listing status. I removed it. We got forty six hundred and six and forty eight homes. You go to listing status. Hide the pendings and contingent. And then just subtract that 46 by this number will give you the amount of pendings. And then you take this number divided by pendings gives you month of inventory. If there are questions, please put it in the chat. We are here. Get them in there, guys. To answer any how, questions. How do you, you have. not have questions? It's the, it's the start of the year. <laughs> you all are getting your businesses off and popping. Anybody in the audience here got one for us? We'll take, we'll take one. Yeah. Come on up. Come on, we, yeah. we want we want the sound. Come over yeah, here. Come here. You, we don't smell. Yeah. So uh, as a college student, um, in the beginning of 2024, you guys are saying a lot of opportunity. Mm -hmm. How would you recommend that we start from scratch? I love it. Starting from scratch. Um, first, uh, drop out of college. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't do that. Um, look, I'm, 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 college experience is phenomenal. Okay? Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Um, but... How would you start from scratch? Well, you got to look at the amount of time you've got right now, right? Um, you're in class all day, so how much how much actual free time do you have in your day on a on a? Okay, so give me a, give me a, give me a number. You have five six hours available a day. All right. Uh, do you have a job? Okay, so you are in the best position possible right now. So you can take those five hours and you can you can literally spend that entire time prospecting. Mm -hmm. And all you've got to do is choose the method of prospect that you want to do, right? You don't, you're not going to go pay-per-click, bro. You're a college student. Right. You're not going to spend 30 grand a month in pay-per-click. It's not for you, nope. okay? You're going to cold call homeowners, mm -hmm. or you're going to do agent outreach, or you're going to do JVs. Th that is how you are going to make Explain this work. Explain to them agent outreach. Okay. Agent outreach is you are calling real estate agents and you're asking them, and it's, these are cold calls, right? This is like, you're like, Hey, look, um, 
and and careful with the list. DM me, I'll send you a list, and I'll send you an agent list. Okay, um, and and whatever market you're working in, I'll I'll hook you up. But um, don't call them off Zillow because it costs them a hundred bucks when you do that, like sixty to a hundred bucks when you use the Zillow number. Oh yeah, and they no. get really mad when you do that. No, they get really that. mad. Like find their cell number through the list. I'll get you or whatever. Right? It's on Zillow. Um, um, but you 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 call their cell. And you're like, look, I'm looking for a house that's in original condition, something that could be even falling down, um, original condition, needing a tremendous amount of work. You got something like that I could take a look at before you put it on the MLS. I, I really like to see them before they're on the MLS because, uh, my, you know, you're young. So I work with a group of investors. They are very finicky about appraisals once the houses get flipped. Uh, appraisers and lenders have been really tough on us. And it's true. All of what I'm saying to you is true right now. They've been tough on us with appraisals. So we really want to get these before they get hit on the MLS so that we don't create a price stamp. Anything in your office, you have any friends, any other agents you work with that have something like that, uh, I'd love to take a look at it. And they're going to give you an answer, yes or no. It's likely going to be no, not right now. Say wonderful. Um, do me a favor. What's your name? Okay, do me a favor. Put me in your phone as Alex has money, wants to buy houses. Like literally put my name in your phone like that. Okay, save me in your phone is something memorable. And I'm going to give you a text every couple weeks and just check in I, because I am hungry. I'm hungry for uh, an opportunity right now to, to be able to get to work. That's it. End the call. On to the next. Do that 50 times a day and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And real quick, I'm, I'm going to show you a, yeah. a different technique as well. Um, the, right here, this is what Jamil's um, talking about, guys. Make sure that you do not go to this contact agent part right here. It's still not showing for some reason, Matt. That, you do okay. Uh, don't go. Don't go here to the contact agent. Uh, go to this number down here, listed by. You can call them off of this. But don't just contact by agent here because then Zillow charges them. Okay. Yeah, and they get they get about. so salty on that. They get so mad. It's of like fastest because yeah. it's like they're they're paying Zillow for that lead, and you're calling them to you know see if there's something. And not, and look, the 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 fact is is that the realtor doesn't quite understand your value yet because you're not calling on the listing that they want to sell right now. You're calling on the future, right? And it's and it's like. You know, we all enjoy what we can eat right now rather, more than what we think we're going to be able to eat in next month, right? So even though you're worth $100 on the Zillow lead, because if she brings you the op or he brings you the opportunity and you connect the dots, they get paid anyways, likely double commission because you're going to let them dual, dual represent and represent the seller and yourself, which like they literally make 6% instead of three. That you will be a much more valuable relationship for that $100 Zillow listing than just some person calling and being like, what are the blinds like? Because that's what that person's also getting too for that $100 call, right? So, but they don't get that quite yet. So, so it's always, it's a kinder way to make an approach not to cost the agent money when you're calling them. But I'm telling you, man, if you, if you do that, what, if we, you do what I just said, and then don't just make that initial call follow up, mm -hmm. right? It's eight to 13 touches. It's okay. There's a guy, AJ Pratt, right? Astro community, dude. He got super pumped. He's doing agent outreach again, nine to five job. So he's not in your situation, right? He didn't have the time. You've got the time. So you don't got to go spend money on software or do a bunch of stuff. Just do the work. This guy has a full-time job. He had other things, obligations, kid, family, the whole nine. So he gets the, the blaster thing going. He sets it on. It hit this one agent with a follow-up 19 times. What person? And you know how many times the agent responded on, on those 19? None. Yeah. He was, it was a follow-up, no response, follow-up, no response, follow-up, no response, follow-up, no response. You would have given up at what, four, five? Let's be real here. When, when would you have given up? Six? Probably three, mm -hmm. right? You would have given up. You would have given up. 19 touches. 
25,000 bucks. Come on. This is what it is. Right? And so like it is a game of 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 doing exactly what Brent says, talk to the people, right? You got to talk to people. You got to do that. Uh, and then you got to follow up because if you just have these little bursts of motivation and discipline is not in the equation, mm -hmm. it doesn't work. Discipline takes you places. Motivation can't. That's for sure. Um, so you can go out and like zero budget. Take that pad of paper, drive around town, write down the addresses of the ugliest houses. OK, just the ugliest houses that need renovation. And you could go right here. This is a slick website, cyberbackgroundchecks.com, right? Cyberbackgroundchecks.com. You put the address in here, and it'll give you the contact information for the owner and of that property. And will it also tell you they're a arrest record? And it'll, well, if you, buy, if you pay oh, for it, it'll tell damn. you anything you want to know about them. But damn. you don't need to worry about that. We don't care. Listen, let them live their lives. We just want to buy their house. You know what I'm saying? Hey, by the way, uh, I noticed that you're, you got a house. It's kind of, I drove by your house. It's... Uh, Falling apart. Also, I did a background check. You're a pedophile. How much you want to sell your house for? Yeah. <laughs> build, build some rapport there. Um, so you can go right there, cyber round. You get the phone number. You call them up. You say, you know what? Sorry. I know that this is out know, of the sorry. blue, but I was calling about your property on 1212 Banana Street. Just want to see if you would consider an offer on your property there. All right. They're going to tell you yes, no, maybe. How much will you give me? Who are you? And how'd you get my number? That's it. There's only six responses. Only six responses when you ask somebody if they would consider an offer on their property. All right. And you just do that over and over and over and over and over again. Right. Just to the ugliest properties. Now, if you have a little bit of budget or if you can pool a budget, I would highly suggest you go to Deal Machine, get the pro plan. It's 150 bucks a month, which might be, a, you know, too much um, if, if you don't have a budget, but figure it out. Like, put together a whole like PowerPoint, put it in front of your parents, in front of your parents and like get the budget for it. Right. And you can, you can go and virtually drive for dollars through Google maps. And most of the major cities have really good Google map images. And you could, if you see an ugly house, you literally click on it and deal machine gives you their phone number for free. And so then you get a list of them and you just start calling them up and asking them, would you consider an offer in their property? And typically you talk to 200 of them and you'll get a deal. That's it. You know what I mean? I mean, that's that's how you start building up the momentum and be around these guys. These guys are doing it every single day. You know what I mean? And so the the big thing is, and the, the, the reason that J Pace, Jamil, and myself have been doing this show for almost four years now, Goodness. Almost four years wow. um, is with the, the, the threat of the show is to squat up. You got to be around people doing this business because if you're not, then you're, you're going to feel a little bit awkward or you're not going to, you're not going to be consistent with it. If you see other people being disciplined, you're going to be disciplined. It's like waking up and going to the gym in the morning, right? If you have some buddies going to the gym with you, or if you have a trainer, you're going to show up. But if it's just you waking up and you're going to go like do curls in your garage, you know, at 430 in the morning, it, it lasts for a little bit. But then, uh, you know, yeah, you're done. It, it's you're it's right. inconsistent. You know what I mean? So definitely squat up. Just go and find some rough. And, and in this, they'll, they'll show you a whole bunch of other reasons people are motivated to sell their property, whether they're going through divorce or pre foreclosure or <laughs> they have liens in their property or they just they, they've owned it for a long time. But it's it's uh, in rough shape. It'll all be here. And it's a really great, really great tool. And uh, if you use TTP as a, like the coupon code, I think they give you like either a month free or a, a, a week free or something like that. So um, definitely check that out. They've done a really good job. They put a lot of money into it. And now they've got free skip tracing, which skip tracing just means getting their phone numbers, the contact information for that. How's property. the data been on that? Apparently good? great. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're just trying to like, I'm, 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 they're I'm trying I'm, to yeah, kill I'm, all. I, I mean, I'm not saying any names. There's, you know, I've been, I was having a hard time. Yeah. On on another platform, I you know. Yep. Since you know, a Doctor Deal Junkie is a platform I'm using for direct to sellers. I got crushing it. right. Yep. Um, the skip tracing there was like, I got when I do a live. Yeah. I want to make phone calls. Well, I talked to them, and I, want, I made them clean it up. I want people to pick mm -hmm. up the phone. Yeah. I was in another little thing. Yeah. Doing a live, and it's just like. You have raised a number that has been disconnected. Yeah. You have raised a number that has been disconnected. Yeah. It's like, I've been doing this for 15 minutes, man. Come well, on. Well, you were hand dialing too. 
There's a hand dialer. Yeah, you got to put it in a dialer. Yeah, so you don't never even hear that. True. Yeah. Yeah. But then, and then you can get a dialer, which will dial for you. And then you start then you get a headset and you feel real Hell official. Yeah. And then you start walking yeah. around. Yeah. yeah. You, you get a little I mean? Jabra headset with noise like cancellation on it. club while you're making yeah. calls. You yeah. Know you're just, I mean? now you're, now you're, now you're. Start. Yeah. Pickleballing. You're all the things. While you're making calls. Getting that energy up. Yeah, absolutely. So, but that's, that's what I would do. You could do it absolutely for free. I did my first 20 deals exactly how I told you with a, with a yellow pad of paper, driving around, just writing down ugly houses and just calling that property owner. And that's it. You know, and, and uh, if you can't get a hold of them, you can do a little handwritten card that you can send for 50 cents or whatever. And, uh, and then just start building the momentum. But that's how you find your, your, the, the opportunities. You either go to the people that, that represent these property owners or you talk to them yourself. Yep. And, and, um, they're both interesting conversations Oh yeah, they're, and very different, very different. They're very different conversations, right? You're dealing with one that's a real estate professional. So their job is, uh, you know, to trade in real estate when you're dealing with an agent. So, um, requires you to, to be able to speak their lingo and there's, and there's a lingo. There's, there's definitely a lingo, Bobby, we should do a, a little, uh, lingo sheet, um, little infographic on my Instagram for agents. Uh, for agents yeah because they got they got their little lingos and if you know if you know and you, if you can speak agent lingo if you can speak agent these um they're they will they're like it's immediate trust yeah it's immediate trust because you're saying the right words also awesome? got on stage in front of the whole group yeah. yesterday never made a call made yeah a call like on i just pulled up realtor i mean zillow put in tlc as a search word and just was calling agents yeah you just had a great conversation right beautiful, away. Beautiful. Right. Beautiful. Yeah. They're not scary. No. They're, and when they, when there's, when they're scary, oh, move on to the next one. That's right. It. There's going to be there. Look, people are people and you never know what's going on in somebody's day. You don't. I, 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 I realized that, the, um, you can call somebody on a Monday and something real terrible is going on in their situation in life. And they're going to be a jerk to you. That doesn't make them a jerk. Right. Um, you can call that same person back yeah. uh, two weeks later and they won't even know that you called them two weeks prior. No. They won't even remember that they were a jerk to you and they'll be a completely different person. So never take this. Per never take this stuff personally, regardless of whether you're going direct to homeowner, or you're going direct to agent. Never take it personal. Always give people the benefit of having a bad day. Mm -hmm. And move on to the next. Don't internalize the negativity when it comes because it'll come. When people tell you to do things to your body that you can't even physically do, uh, which they will, um, just bless them and move on, man. Mm -hmm. You know, it's and and this is exactly what the, the business is, right? Thick, thicken up your skin. It's going to give you some incredible communication skills. And, um, you know, whether or not you become a full time wholesaler or what do you do in college? finance cool so Me you know too. it's that's uh that's that's great whether you become a full-time wholesaler or you you know do something in the world of finance what you gain and experience in this will make you so much better at what you may ultimately do in the end that that this will be the real education because they're not teaching you this stuff in the, in finance classes i'm telling you they're not they're not teaching you how to how to connect how to how to create business, how to be able to secure the deal, how to bring the money in. They don't teach you that because the dudes teaching. Guess what? They failed at it. That's why they're <laughs> teaching it like for in, in a college. Like that's why they're doing it, because they, they actually couldn't do it in real life. Why does he still run a wholesale business? Why do I still run a wholesale business for the exact reason? I can't lose my edge. I don't want to be the professor. I, I can't. Right. I, I, I got to be in it. I still got to be in it. I got I got people sending me deals every freaking day. I'm still comping. I'm still comping houses. I'm 45 years old. I shouldn't have to be comping houses, but I'm still comping houses. But I, I enjoy that. it. I love it. Mm -hmm. I do. I, I, I actually do. It's like a puzzle game to me, you know, and you'll learn these different skills and it'll serve you well, man. It really will. How do you yeah. handle showings if you're wholesaling virtually? Ooh, love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, so um, first, you got to have boots on the ground. You need boots on the ground because if you don't, your showing is going to go to hell in a handbasket. 
Um, your buyers are going to uh, 1000% start talking to the agent or if it's a direct to homeowner showing whatever, if it's a an agent opening the door or if it's a direct to seller deal and it's a homeowner opening the door, that that person is very likely going to say, even if they're not surreptitiously trying to steal the deal from you or create like a um, some kind of situation, people just say dumb stuff. So you've always got to have some boots on the ground that can give your buyer the rules of engagement, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to do when we walk into the house. Um, and we're going to, Bobby and I are going to shoot some content this, um, this coming um, season where we, we actually show you what that showing should look like, right? Like we'll do an actual, we'll get a Keegley property. We'll, we'll put together a showing. We'll mic me up. We'll get, we'll, I'm going to do the talk where I, I talk to the buyers and I explain to them what's going to go, what, how this is going to play out. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to map them through. But what you do is you tell them, listen, we're going to go in the house. You're going to say nothing. You don't talk to the seller. You don't talk to the agent. You speak to nobody. If you want to ask questions about the house, write them down. Ask me about them later. I can get it to you from a conversation I have with my connection, or I'll get it to you in the spuds, which are the seller's property disclosure statement. Um, but no talking in the house. That's that's what it is. Do not ask questions. Just go in there. Do what you got to do. Look at the walls. Look at the things. Take measurements. Um, I'm watching. So we all got it. You got it. You got it. Cool. Then you go in with a nice little treat and whoever it is, whether it be the realtor or the homeowner, you you give them a treat. You're like, hey, how's it going? I brought you a cinnamon roll. How you doing today? Things are good. Let your buyers walk around, do their thing. You're distracting the homeowner. You're just like letting them do their thing. They're having a conversation with you, eating cin Cinnabon. Let the, let the people do their thing. The ducks run out. They've got sticky cream cheese all over their face. You walk out, get the deal done, sold outside. That's how you do a showing. Ill Minds asked, Brent, what percentage of your deals are novations right now? Zero. Zero percent. But I like novations. I think novations could be a really nice tool in the toolbox. It's we so just, risky, though. We just I haven't, uh, like we haven't it. done it. What do you mean? Uh, bro, like they, you keep the title in the seller's name and now you're renovating the house? No, 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 no. This is just. You're talking about like a net listing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what people call novations now. It's basically you're replacing yourself with a conventional buyer. Novation means replacing. And so what you do is you put a property under contract that's in somewhat, you can get conventional financing. This isn't really destroyed properties. These are just properties that are in okay shape, but the seller just doesn't want to deal with it, right? And uh, I'm actually having Rich Wonders, which is, that's a great name. Do you know Rich? I do. I love him. By, great by guy. Yeah. Uh, Rich yeah. Wonders on the podcast tomorrow. So I'm going to really pick his brain because he, he does a lot of these. And you see, I see a lot of Instagram uh, uh, ads for novations and the whole thing. And I think that there's there's a time and a place. We we typically focus on rougher looking properties, but I think that there's there's probably, uh, I love that, Daniel uh, Keanu. Uh, there's there's probably some some great places that we can add this to our business. So I want to pick his brain on, on exactly, you know, where that fits. I was working with Todd Toback um, about a year and a half ago, and he was doing some great trainings on that as well. And uh, we just haven't, we just, it, it hasn't been a real fit for uh, the presentations that we've done so far, yeah. but we probably are doing it wrong. So I'm going to, I'm going to figure that out. Cool. I mean, I actually, that'll be an episode. So, I'm so really it's like wholesale, it's wholesaling on the MLS, on the MLS yep. with conventional buyers. Got it. Right. Yep. Because you do a net net proceeds, yep. right? Yep. And so you get a certain amount that you get paid. Yeah, you're like on the seller side. The seller knows what you're getting paid. They just want a white glove treatment. Yep. They don't want to deal with anything. They just want it to be sold. They don't mind if you put it on the on the market. So uh, it's a it, it's it's it messes with my brain. Yeah, it does because yeah. I'm like cash. Yeah, cash or creative. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. So yep. Uh, it's going to be really, really, really great. So uh, stay tuned for that. And if you have not subscribed to uh, my YouTube channel, go ahead and do that. Likewise, folks, um, we're excited. We're excited for the year to come. Uh, a lot of a lot of opportunity. A lot of deals are going to get done. A lot of a lot of millionaires are going to be made. Yep. A lot of money will be made this year. Don't sleep on the opportunities. Um, and also. Don't let yourself become a victim of these little spurts of 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 motivation yeah. and not, and not having it coupled to discipline because I'm telling you the discipline is what's going to win the game for you all the time. Uh, get up, do it when it hurts because that's when it matters the most. 
Yep. We love you guys. We'll see you next week. Peace. Post sell hotline. We're out. Or just say squat up. So squat up and enjoy the show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, so three. squat up and enjoy the show. <laughs> what are you doing? I didn't say that thing. Why? I don't know. <laughs> okay. So, so squat, squat up and enjoy the show. Cool. <laughs> I think we should use the one where Jamil doesn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs>